friends, today we are talking about all of the books I want to read before the end of the year. And I've got some ambitious plans, so buckle up. My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be a very, very chill and super cozy, I hope, video. I have a cup of hot coffee in my cute little, look at him, he's so cute, I love this little fox so much. So yeah, today we will be discussing the books that I would like to read before the year is up, as well as all of my plans for the rest of the year and some plans for next year, question mark. That's right, we are doing the end of the year book tag. This book tag was of course created by Ariel Bissette. I do this every single year. I love this tag. I love the mid-year book freakout tag. They're just really fun ways, I think, to connect and to discuss all of the reading plans. But before we go ahead and hop into the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Today's video is very kindly being sponsored by Book of the Month. Book of the Month is an online book subscription service and they are a delight for all readers. Every single month, their highly selective team actually vets hundreds of different books so that they can carefully curate a selection of books for you to choose from. And their list ranges from thrillers to romances to contemporary, and there is even some YA sprinkled in. It's primarily an adult book subscription service, and it's fantastic because every single month you actually get to choose from their selection and choose one or more than one book that you would like to be delivered right to your door. And subscribing to Book of the Month is also completely risk-free because if there is a month that you are not vibing with the current selection, you can choose one of two things you can either choose from their very extensive selection of backlist titles, or you can choose to skip a month penalty free. And this month, I actually chose two books for my Book of the Month book club selection. The first Book of the Month selection that I picked was The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. And this is a repeat author and a thriller. Nobody likes the reflection in Mirror Lake when a dead body bobs to the surface and starts unveiling all of their secrets. I almost always choose my book of the month selections to be thrillers because their thriller selections, in my opinion, are always top notch. And this just sounds incredible. I'm very excited. I can't wait to dive into it. Who doesn't love a good thriller, you know? And then my second selection is actually an add-on and a sequel. And it is called Blood Marked, book two in the Legendborn cycle by Tracy Dion. I'm not actually going to tell you what this particular book is about because I don't want to spoil the first one. But the first book is about a girl named Brie and Brie goes to a new school and at this new school she discovers a secret society and potentially some magic. It is a fantasy and it's actually also YA and I am very excited to read the first one as well as the sequel. And if you are interested in trying out Book of the Month, which I highly recommend you do so, you can actually get your very first book box for only $9.99 if you use my code, which is Alexandra. I highly recommend you check them out. All of the links for them will be down below as well as my code. And thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this. Now, let's get back to the video. Well, let's go ahead and dive right into the questions. I do have everything written down on my handy dandy notebook. Oh, now I wanna watch Blue's Clues. Anyways, let's begin with question number one. Question number one, are there any books that you have started this year that you still need to finish? Yes, there are. The very first one that I need to finish is Hotel Magnifique, and this is a book that I actually started in one of my reading vlogs, and I think I got to either 40% or 50% into this. And it's about two siblings who essentially try to get jobs in this magical traveling hotel called Hotel Magnifique, but once they enter in, it is nothing like they thought it would be, and it's actually a little bit more sinister and scary. And I think I originally put this down because I was not vibing with the main character as much. I don't even remember her name, but I do remember it being an incredibly atmospheric and very cozy book. So I think even though I don't love the main character, I would like to finish this before the end of the year. So that is the very first one. And then the second one is actually Belladonna, and this is by Adeline Grace. This is another YA book, and it's also a fantasy. This one has a little bit of a different air though, whereas I think Hotel Magnifique was more of a fantasy with Night Circus vibes. This feels a little bit more gothic, a little bit more like The Secret Garden, but all grown up. This book is following Signa, and Signa is convinced that death has followed her around since she was a baby, and she also believes that she cannot die. You learn a little bit more about that as the book progresses. And she has been sent to live with different guardians ever since she has become an orphan as a baby. And every 
every single time she goes to one of her new guardians, something tragic happens and they end up dying. And so she keeps getting sent to new members of the family. And at her newest member of the family, she's at the Hawthorne house and she believes that the wife was murdered and now she's trying to crack a murder mystery case. It's very spooky, very gothic and very atmospheric. It is a little bit slower than I was originally thinking it was going to be, which is why I haven't finished it. But I am very interested in this world and in the cast of characters, especially Signet and Death. But I really, really wanna finish this book before the end of the year. I do think it's going to end up being a very, very high read for me. Question number two, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year for? I actually have two here, and I don't know if this is just me or if this is a common thing in readers, but I have different seasons where I am in the mood for different things. For example, while I love holiday romances and things like that, I tend to gravitate more towards romances in the summer and almost in the spring as well. But fantasies, those are books that I tend to reach for more in the colder months. I think it starts kind of in the autumn for me and then the colder it gets, the more all I wanna do is consume fantasies. And I feel like I have two really good recommendations for that. The very first one is Legends and Lattes and this is by Travis Baldry. I've talked about this book quite a bit on my channel. I think it is such a cozy and atmospheric read. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even remember the time period that it takes place in, but I feel like it would be perfect for this time of year. We're following Val and Val wants to retire from adventures and she wants to open up a cozy coffee shop. And we're following her and this really, really charming cast of characters in this quaint little magical village as she attempts to open up a cafe and hire a baker and make new friends and possibly like a new romance in her life. And it just feels perfect for this time of year. It feels like a cozy, comfort, warm blanket on a very, very cold night. And I just love this book so much. So this is definitely like a top recommendation for me as a transitional book into the winter time. And then the next one is one that I don't remember like again the season, but it feels very autumnal and winter-esque just because it feels like a fairy tale and fairy tales also remind me of the winter time. And that is going to be Nettle and Bone. This is an adult standalone fantasy. I gave this five out of five stars. It's gonna be in my top 10 of the year. I think it's fantastic. We're following Mara and Mara has to complete three impossible tasks to get the help of something called a dust witch so that she can rescue her sister from an evil prince. I don't know if the premise sounds interesting to you, but believe me, the humor, the character, arcs in this, the overall plot, the adventure in this, it's just so cozy. It's so well worth the read and it feels sort of wintry in my mind. Again, I don't really remember what time this takes place in, but it's just, I think, perfect for a cozy autumn and wintertime read. So I highly recommend Nettle and Bone. Question number three, is there a new release that you are still waiting for before the end of the year is done? And no, actually my very final release was House of Hunger, which just came out this last month, I guess in October. This is by Alexis Henderson and this is a standalone adult horror and this was really freaking good. I gave this horror a five out of five stars. It was everything I wanted and more and I was actually really afraid it was going to put me in a reading slump because I loved it so much that I actually had zero desire to continue reading after this. I was like this is this is it. I'm done. It's so good. If you are interested in vampire-esque stories in adult horror in gothic feels I think you should pick this up. We're following our main character Marion who is trying to get a job as a blood maid and she does become a blood maid to a very wealthy and prominent countess and it's very well horrifying and it's really great. I loved it. Question number four. What are three books you want to read by the end of the year? I do have three like physical books that I know for sure I need to read by the end of the year. The first one is a personal challenge to myself and that is I need to read Frankenstein. I was going to be reading this in October but I think I'm just going to end up reading this in November and December. I don't 
don't know if I'm gonna vlog it because technically Halloween and spooky season sadly has passed. But just as like a personal challenge to myself, I really want to read Frankenstein because I've wanted to read it for such a long time. And I know that this is one of my dad's favorite books. So I really, really want to kind of prioritize this so that I can talk to him about it. I feel like you know what Frankenstein is about. It's iconic about Dr. Frankenstein who creates life and believes that he has instead created a monster. And then the next two books that I definitely want to finish are for my book club. Oh my gosh, I have two book clubs. If you didn't know, you can actually check them out. I do them both exclusively on Patreon. The first one is called Whimsy and Wit, which is kind of like an ode to my very first book club, which was A Touch of Whimsy. And the Whimsy and Wit book club selection is going to be The Trials of Morgan Crow, which is the very first book in the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend. This book club specifically is a middle grade book club and we focus on like whimsical and magical reads. This particular book is one of my very favorite middle grades of all time. I have read it three times, but I have not reread it in several years. So I'm really, really excited to reread it again and vlog my experience, hopefully. This book is following Morgan Crow, who has been cursed to die on her, I believe 13th birthday, if I'm getting that right, maybe it's her 11th birthday. And she is instead saved in the nick of time by a magical man named Jupiter North, who takes her away and enters her into these trials to try to get her into a magical secret society. I love this book five out of five stars, I've already read it, and I can't wait to reread it and then discuss it for the live show of the book club. The next one is a book that I have not read, but it was actually gifted to me by one of my subscribers, and this is the book club selection for my second book club, which is called the Fox and Burrow Book Club, and that is A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher. I have heard excellent things about this book in particular, and it has such high ratings on Goodreads that I really have a lot of confidence this is going to to become possibly a favorite, actually, especially after reading Nettle and Bone. Nettle and Bone is by the exact same author and it completely took me by surprise and I loved it so very much. I wanna read a little bit of the back. It says, 14 year old Mona isn't like the other wizards charged with defending the city. She cannot control lightning or speak to water. Her familiar is a sourdough starter and her magic only works on bread. She has a comfortable life in her aunt's bakery making gingerbread men dance. But Mona's life is turned upside down when she finds a dead body on the bakery floor. So it's a little tiny bit, I think, of a murder mystery, but I'm just very excited to learn all about her. I'm excited to learn all about her magical powers, and I can't wait to discuss this with my book club members as well and my Patreons. I also am very excited to discuss this in like the end of November because gingerbread are going to be present, and because we're going into the wintry season, I'm thinking of having like a gingerbread themed live show. Exciting stuff. And then also, I'm trying to read cozy mysteries for a TBR challenge. Really, really want to read just in general cozy mysteries. And of course, as the end of the year progresses, I would like to reach for more fantasies, holiday romances, and winter thrillers. I've got quite a few books that I definitely want to try to get to by the end of the year. It's a great time to be alive, my friends. Lots of good books out there. Question number five, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, this question sometimes throws me off a little bit because I don't really understand. Am I trying to pick a book where I think I'm not gonna like it and I would be shocked that it would be my favorite? Or am I picking a book that I think could become my favorite and I haven't read it yet? I'm gonna go with that particular last one. And I do think after reading Nettle and Bone, this could potentially be a favorite or at least in my top 10 favorites of the year, A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, just because when I read Nettle and Bone, I was shocked by how much I loved it. Like I was so enthralled, I was so engaged. T. King Fisher is my new hero. Like she is the person I want to write like most. I just am obsessed with T. King Fisher's writing. So I think it's a very real that this might end up being in my top 10 of the year, potentially. I'm not really sure, especially since I'm getting way more into cozier books, whether they're cozy fantasies or cozy mysteries. Just give me all the cozy, you know? Life is too stressful. I want a fun time in a book. Yes, I think that's the direction I'm going. <laughs> and then finally, question number six. Have you already started making reading plans for the next year? Okay, that's a very good question. And I think the answer is yes and no. I have started making some plans as far as secret TBR videos, I think would be really, really fun to read and to vlog in the new year.
year that I'm really excited about. But as far as like books that I know I definitely wanna read, I don't know if I have a ton yet. I really, really wanted to do the entirety of the series of unfortunate events, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough time before the end of the year is out, just because there's a couple of other videos that I think take a little bit more priority. So I do think I wanna read the entirety of that series in the upcoming year. But aside from that, I don't have specific books. I more have specific ideas for my channel, for video series, for secret TBR videos. But I think that's it. Those are all of the questions. I love this tag so much. I am planning on doing one last TBR of the year, and that is going to be my winter TBR. I cannot believe it's already November. I cannot believe we are almost to the final end of the year. I'm very excited. I have read so many good books this year. I have read so many five out of five stars just in the last couple of months alone. I think that coming up with a top 10 list is going to be very difficult this year, which is always a great problem to have. But I would love to know from you guys several things. So like, please let me know any of them or all of them down below. First of all, do you have a favorite book of the year yet? And if so, which book was it? I am dying to know. Second of all, are there any specific wintry types of videos you would like to make sure that I do in the upcoming next couple of months because I always really like to factor in what you guys would like to see onto my channel. And then finally, number three, what are you most excited for next year? Is there a particular book that's coming out? Is there a particular event that's coming out? It doesn't have to be book related if you don't want it to be, but I would love to hear from you. What are you excited about in the new year? For me, I'm always really excited for goals. I am a, I am a goal oriented A type personality and I am proud of it. Okay. I cannot wait for new years when I can start setting some goals. I think that's it for now though, you guys. Once again, a huge, huge thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. All of their links will be down below in the description. And again, a huge, huge thank you to all of my lovely Patreons down over at Fox and Wood. If you're looking for a cozy reader community to join, I highly recommend checking us out. All of the links for that will be down below as well as thank yous to all of my executive producers of this video. I love you guys all so very much. And and until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye! <laughs>